Uh, in Philippians chapter 2, you can turn there if you like, if you don't, that's fine. The Bible said, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, talking about Jesus Christ. Said the Bible, he said, wherefore God, the Father, hath also highly, highly exalted him, and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Joe Biden will bow. Reg Kelly will bow. And every knee is going to bow before the Lord at the name of Jesus Christ. Now the Bible says that uh, they that know his name will do great exploits. Those that know his name. Now the Bible has about 180 plus names and titles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now if you were here for Bible study this morning, we was in heavy water. And I'll tell you what, she was all heavy, and I was about ready to quit because I could see y'all going down and down and down. And, and so we're going to, let me just tell you something about the sovereignty of God and all of that that you can, I cannot figure out. You let, you let Jesus take care of that, and you go and have a good time, okay? Amen. But it's in the Bible, we're going to address it. But I'm not going to hang around that, hang around that very long. I'm going to get on down the road and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm going to live with the Lord now. I want to just this morning do something. In the past, one time, I preached on a bunch of the names of Jesus Christ. And I, and I just dropped it off, but I'm going to pick it back up this morning. And Brother Don, it is good to have you here. Amen. I tell you, it's good to have a man in your church so mean the devil can't kill him. Amen? Amen? Boy, I tell you what, I'm glad he's back this morning. I'm glad Tristan turned 21. Tristan, where are you at back here? I'm glad you turned 21. Amen? Amen. And Tristan's a blessing. And Ben, how old are you, Ben? How old's Ben? 21. 21. Amen. Boy, I tell you, we love you guys. Oh, Ben, I tell you what, I love you, Ben. You're a blessing to me. And uh, I want to tell you something. Heaven's going to be something. Amen? Amen. Heaven's going to be something. Uh, let me just tell you something. I'm, I'm the one that's not normal. <laughs> I think they're the one. Amen? I mean, seriously, we be careful. We get that mixed up pretty bad. And uh, we think we're something when we're nothing. Well... So the Bible's got a lot of names, and if you go down through the alphabet with the names of Christ, that's what we're going to do. Well, if you start off with the letter A, now I want to tell you what you do. Would you all just check out of the world right now? Just check out. We're at church, amen? amen. How many is hot besides me? Is anybody hot besides me? Amen. Anybody cold besides me? I'm not cold and I'm not hot. I'm just, well, I'm kind of hot. I'm sweating, amen? <laughs> all righty. But now, all righty. But we're going to preach this morning on the names of Jesus Christ. Well, the first one in the A list is he's the Alpha and the Omega. Let me just tell you the truth about it is. If it's not about Jesus, I really don't want to be here this morning. Amen. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ. He's, our, he's everything to us. Well, the Bible said he's our Alpha and Omega. That means he's the first in the alphabet and he's the last in the alphabet. And, and within that is everything that man even thinks about because we communicate by uh, language and by letters, and that's how it's he's everything in it. He's the Alpha and the Omega. But the Bible said he's also the last Adam. He's the second Adam. Adam was the first Adam. He put us into the curse and fall. Jesus is the last Adam. He's going to bring back paradise and the Garden of Eden like it was. But the Bible said also that Christ is the anointed one. If you want to write these down, you can. I think they'll be a blessing to you. It is good to dwell and to meditate upon his name. And the Bible said that at his name, every knee is going to bow. Well, the Bible said he's the anointed one. And, uh, you know, anointed has to do with an office. And he's a prophet, he's a priest, and he's the king. In the Bible, New Testament, he was a prophet. Right now, he's our priest, and in the future, he'll be our king. He's the anointed one, anointed prophet, anointed prophet, priest, and king. And the Bible calls him our Aaron. Aaron was the high priest, and Jesus is our high priest making intercession for us. Jesus is also our altar. He is the place of sacrifice. He's the person of our sacrifice. Jesus is, the Bible calls him our ark. And he's a place of protection from the devil and the world and the flesh. But more than anything, he's the ark of safety from the wrath of Almighty God. And let me just say this to you this morning, that if you're here and you're not saved, you can get in the ark. And you can be spared from the wrath of Almighty God against sin. And then the Bible said, he's our amen. Now, that's the truth. Everything I'm going to give you is in the Bible. I just won't give you the reference for it right now, but you can look it up. <coughs> he's called the amen. That means it's settled. It's sure. It's true. It's right. He's our amen. Amen? amen. All right. He's our amen. Amen? 
I'm going to have, I'm going to get a smile out of you one way or the other this morning. All right. Now, listen, if you don't get in this thing, now, you know, some of you, y'all just get a little bit loose and say amen once in a while. Amen. Where's the amen crowd at this morning? Amen. All right. I tell you, y'all let the devil know you're, you're at church this morning. Amen. amen. That's right. He's our amen. But the Bible said he's the author of eternal salvation. Now, he ain't the author of temporary salvation. He's the author of eternal salvation. He started it, amen. He's the author of eternal salvation. Then he's also the author, and a lot of folks know this, but he's also the finisher of our faith. I, I tell you, I'm up, I've been going down the road long enough. If he don't finish it, I ain't going to make it, amen. amen. I'm telling you, I, you know, I'll be honest with you this morning. I, I've been heavy. You ask my wife. I've just been heavy. I'm telling you, what did you see like? burden. I mean, I'm fighting sin. I'm fighting my flesh. I'm fighting the devil. I'm fighting the world. I'm fighting, I mean, just seeing like everything. It's just an internal spiritual warfare. But I've learned something. If I praise his holy name, it'll get better. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And we're looking at the names of Jesus Christ. And I'm glad this morning that he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. I tell you, I'm not a finish this thing. He done finished it. When he cried on the cross, it is finished. Amen. And then the Bible Bible said he's altogether lovely. Amen. Amen. I tell you a song of Solomon. He said he's altogether lovely. Every way you look at Jesus, he's lovely. Amen. Amen. He's lovely. Amen. I'll tell you what. Every way you look at him, you can't look. You can look at his, his pre-existence and his virgin birth and his life as a child and his and life as, as an adult and his sacrifice on the cross and his interceding for us and his coming back for us and everything about him is lovely. Amen. Amen. Everything about him. He's love, altogether lovely. Well, the Bible said he's our all in all. Yeah, boy, he's everything. Amen. Apart from Christ, there ain't nothing. He's all in all. Bible says he's our anchor. If you don't stick, you're still in the A's. Amen. I'm going to hope I get my alphabet right. He's our anchor. I tell you, I've got an anchor in heaven. Amen. And I tell you what, he's holding me. He's my anchor. He's holding me. And I tell you, the storm waters is a-blowing, and the winds is a-blowing, and the waters are rolling, but his anchors are holding it. My anchor holds. Amen. Then he's not only my anchor, but he's my advocate. He's a standing up in court for me. And the devil comes up, the accuser of the brother, and said, Reggie Kelly's worse as hell. You ought to send him to hell. He's a joke. And I have to say, he's right. The devil right about that. But I've got an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. And I tell you right now, he is my attorney and he is pleading my case. And every time the devil accuses me, Jesus can say, yeah, but it's paid for, amen. Yeah, he's wicked. Yeah, he ought to have been in hell. But his sins are paid for. I am his advocate, amen. And then he's almighty, amen. I don't care what the Mormons or the Jehovah Witnesses or Muslim thinks. Jesus Christ is almighty God. He made this world, created this world. He made everything. All things by him were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And my Lord Jesus Christ is almighty God. Amen. You want to blow a Mormon's gasket, you just tell him Jesus Christ is almighty God. You want to see, you want to see a Jehovah Witness start almost choke up and vomit, tell him Jesus Christ is almighty God. Amen. I'm telling you right now, we need to get back to an old fashioned proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. That is almighty God. Amen. And there's none besides him and we've come to worship him this morning. I tell you what you ought to do. Tell the devil, kick him out of your pew and say, I've come to worship God and you're not going to keep me quiet and you're not going to rob me of worshiping my Lord this morning. I'm going to praise his blessed name today. I'm not preaching. I'm just praising right now. Amen. That not only is the almighty, but the Bible says he's the ancient of days and the Bible said he's the angel of the Lord. He's the messenger of, God, of the Father. He's the apostle of our faith. He's the arm of the Lord. And that, how many, what do you think about him on the A's? Amen. What do you think about him? Amen. Do you like him? Yeah. Do you love him? Yeah. Amen. Well, then worship him. Amen. Amen. I tell you, don't go, don't walk, don't, you don't strut up to the throne of grace. You bow before the throne of grace. Amen. You don't strut up to the cross and tell God how good you are and how holy and spiritual you are. I tell you, we're saved by the grace and the mercy of God. Well, we're going to go in the next alphabet, and that's, he's called the babe of Bethlehem. And he was conceived in the womb of a virgin Mary, and he was the babe of Bethlehem. And I tell you, they, they bowed and worshiped him. But the Bible said also be 
he's a blessed and only potentate. And if I didn't have a good time preaching that, I've never had a good time. And ever since I preached that, I've just been thinking as I go out and work, he's a blessed and only potentate. Ain't no potentates besides my Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said he's the bright and the morning star. That's B. We're still in the bees. Amen. The bees are still flying. Amen. And he's a bright and the morning star. Amen. He's a bright and the morning star. And the Bible said he's the breaker. That means he broke through the ice. He broke through the grave. He broke through death. He broke through hell. He broke through judgment. He's the breaker that has went ahead of me. And then the Bible said he's the beginning and the end. Amen. He's the beginning and the end. He was there when it started and he'll be there when it's finished. He'll be the last man standing. You watch what I tell you. Amen. He's the beginning and the end. And then the Bible said he's my brother. He's my elder brother. Amen. I'm telling you what, I got a friend that's just closer than a brother. And the Bible said he's our bridegroom. And he's coming after his bride for long. Amen. That trumpet of God's going to sound. I'm going to tell you what, we're going to go to be a Jesus, have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we're coming back to the earth for a thousand year honeymoon with him. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I'm telling you right now, he's our beloved. The Bible says not only our bridegroom, but he's our beloved. And the Bible said he's our banner. And the Bible said he's our brazen serpent who took our curse for us. And that brass serpent speaks that he bore the judgment of Almighty God of the curse of sin and took our curse for us. And the Bible said he's our branch. And when they're talking about that, it's talking about that kind of, that, that branch in the tabernacle. That centerpiece was the branch. And off it hangs everything. And let me just tell you right now that Jesus Christ is the branch. And off of him, everything's a hanging. And you take the branch out, you ain't got nothing left. Amen. But he's my branch and through that branch, through that branch flows all the blessings of God. Every truth you know, every blessing you've ever had, every hope you have, everything you believe, it flows through the branch of Almighty God by the power of the Holy Spirit into your spirit. And then the Bible says he's our bread. Amen. He's my bread. I don't know about you, but my spirit hungers for truth. Amen. I'll tell you something. In America, we got everything but the real thing anymore. I mean, tell you what, there's, I don't know what, they, they, they've got artificial meat. Don't you ever try to feed me a veggie burger. I tell you, I'm liable, to, I'm, liable, I'm, liable to, I'm liable to grab your glasses off the front of your face. I'll tell you right now, don't you ever try to feed me that junk. I'm telling you right now, don't feed me white bread if I come to your house either. Amen. I mean, if you're going to feed me, feed me some, I mean, brown bread. Amen. It's got some wheat in it. Amen. It's got some life in that bread. I tell you, Americans have been eating white bread enough. We look like, we look like a bunch of wimps, a bunch of snowflakes, a bunch of sissies. He's eating that white bread. And the problem with bread is that book is bread. And the problem with America is we've been eating a bunch of, you know what white bread does? They take, the, they take everything out of it. And they put on the package enriched bread. You know why? Because they took everything out. They put a little bit back and called it enriched bread and you eat it. You ever took about white bread and water it up in your hand, throw it against the wall, you'll never eat it again. <laughs> it don't even make good glue, amen. Your stomach can't digest it. Bread. That's got life in it, the bread of life. And our Lord Jesus is, well, I won't preach, I can't preach on all these all day long. Well, we're down now to see. And the Bible said he's our creator, amen. Jesus Christ is the creator. The Bible calls him the child. The Bible calls him the carpenter. And he's got the skill and he's got the patience and he's got the vision to build your life. And then the Bible calls him Christ. He's our Messiah. And then the Bible calls him our commander. I'm going to tell you something right now. The Bible said this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I tell you. I'm going to tell you something. I'm so sick of modern Christianity. I'll tell you right now, some of you in this church house, you claim to be saved. You claim, I want to ask you right now, is he your commander? Is he the one telling you how to live? Do you obey him? I'm telling you, or I got, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Hey, he's our, he's our, he's our commander. I'm going to tell you something right now. He's the one giving orders. Amen. He's the one giving the orders. Amen. And then he's the captain of the Lord's host. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. I'm telling you, he's coming with 10,000s. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. There's not an army of the world and all together that'll stand up against my Lord Jesus Christ. And he's called the chief. And he's called the covert from the storm. Boy, aren't you glad I've got a cleft in the rock I can get in and hide when the storms are blowing over. Down there on the Buffalo River way up there on the sides of them bluffs, there's little insects in the rocks and you look up there and there'll be a little bird sitting up there going, sticking his tongue out and going, I'm safe with, from the storm. He's back inside that rock, amen. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can hide me, thou rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself from thee. And the Bible said he's the city of refuge. And that old city of refuge, brother, whenever they were uh, guilty of a crime, they could run to that city of 
of refuge. And if they got inside the gate, amen, they were safe. And I'll tell you, one day I found out that the law of God was a chase of me. And I'll tell you, I began to run, John, run. The law demands, but it gives me neither feet nor hands. Far better news the gospel brings. It bids me fly and gives me wings. And one day the Bible said Christ is the end of the law. And I was a running from God and running from God. And all of a sudden, run straight into the arms of Jesus Christ. And the law throwed up his hands and he said, I can't get him no further. He's in the arms of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to tell you something right now. Jesus Christ is everything that you and I need. He's our city of refuge, but he's also our confidence. Now, you listen to me. He is my confidence. Amen. I'm not confident in Reggie Kelly, and you better not be either. Right. You say, well, I've got confidence in Reg. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I ain't got confidence in you either, by the way. Amen. I'll tell you, but he's my confidence. That's what the Bible said, that he's our confidence. And the Bible said he's chosen of God. And the Bible said he's called, and he answered the call. And the Bible said he's consecrated. He was totally committed to you and I on the cross. And the Bible said he's our covenant. That's a blood covenant with the promises of God attached to it. And the Bible said he's our cornerstone, and a cornerstone will set the direction of your life. You get on that cornerstone, it's going to tell you which way to go, amen. You ain't just wandering down through the field, and some of you need to get hooked up and set into the cornerstone, and your life will get straightened out. And the Bible said he's not just our cornerstone, but he's the crown of glory, amen. I tell you, he's our crown of glory. If there's any, I'm telling you right now, Christ is everything, but he's also my counselor. I don't need you for my counselor. I don't need a shrink. I don't need a pill. I've got a counselor, my Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. And if I go to the Word of God, bless God Almighty, I can get counsel from the Word of God. And blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, but is that his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his word doth he delight. Day and night, meditate day and night, and God will counsel you. Amen. Amen. Most people aren't looking for counsel, they're looking for an excuse. Amen. They're looking for justica- justification. Amen. But I will tell you right now, he's my counselor. You say, Reggie, I need to know what to do. Don't ask me, I don't know much, but I'll tell you this book will give you the answer. Amen. Amen. But he's not only my counselor, but he's my comforter. What do you think about this man? Yeah. What do you think about him? Yeah. What do you think about him? Yeah. Is he worthy of your worship this morning? Amen. Yes, sir. He's my counselor. But you know what? He's more than that. He's my comforter. Yeah. He's my comforter. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't know, man. I tell you what, I wish somebody... No, nah, I don't wish nobody would have told me nothing. But I tell you what, the road just seems like it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. And he's my counselor. But boy, sometimes I need more than counseling, brother. I need some comforting. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you something, Karen. She's a good comforter, but oh, there ain't nobody like my Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning I was walking across out there by my shop across that way out there. And I'll tell you what, I was praying to my God. And I was saying, Lord, you know, I just don't even feel like hardly going to church. I've been so wicked. It's so low down, so nasty, it's so rotten, Lord. I just feel like a hypocrite this morning. And I'll tell you what, I just fell down on my knees in that dirt. And I just began to pray. That God, boy, I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost of God came and said, Reggie, I know you better than you know yourself. Amen. You're so, so, you don't even know how wicked you are. You won't even admit how wicked you are. But Reggie, I've loved you. I gave my son for you. And Reggie, I'm going to hold you and I'm going to help you. I ain't, I ain't got you this far and drop you off. Amen. I'm going to take you through, buddy. I'm going to tell you something. He's my comforter. And you know what else? Everyone's about here lay his hand on my shoulder and say, son, it's going to be all right now. It's going to be all right. You're going to make it through. I want you to know something. He, I want to ask you today, is he your counselor? Is he your comforter today? And then not only that, but he's my consolation. Amen. But we got to the, we're going to get to D now. We'll get to the next one, D. Is that right? Well, he's God's dear son. Amen. And he's my dear savior. And he's my delight. Amen. The Bible said, delight yourself in the law of the Lord. And the Bible said, he's my dude. Did you know that Jesus Christ is pictured as dew in the Bible? And that dew comes in the morning and it comes in the, there in the dark. And buddy, I'm going to tell you something, the light's on that. And buddy, I'll tell you, it freshens up the whole world. I met God in the morning while the day was at its best. And his presence felt like sunshine across my breast. All day long, his presence lingered. Buddy, I'm going to tell you something. We ought to get up in the morning and get some dew from heaven on us. Amen. And the freshness of Almighty God. I'll tell you, you get into a place where there ain't no dew and you got trouble. Amen. And I'll tell you what you're going to do now. You want some dew from heaven, you get up about four or five o'clock in the morning, get your Bible out, get away from everybody else and get with God and the dew of heaven will come down on you. The Bible said he's the desire of the nations and there will be a time when all the nations will come to him. The Bible said he's our day star. The Bible said he's our day spring. The Bible said he's our day's man. Job said that he's our, he was his day's man. A day's man is one as a mediator in the court of Almighty God. Then the Bible 
said, he's my door. Amen. I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. I'm telling you right now, a door is a place of access. It's a place of entry. And Jesus said, by me, you enter in. Then he's my dwelling place. They that dwell in the secret place of the Almighty. Man, I'm telling you something. I dwell in him and he in me and he is my dwelling place. But the Bible said he's our defense. Yes, sir. He's our defense. The Bible said he's our greater David. The Bible said he was despised and rejected. And I want to say something plainly here this morning. You get close to Jesus, you make your every attempt to follow this book and stand by it, you're going to be despised and you're going to be rejected by this world. Mark it in your day book. They're going to, not, they're going to hate your guts for what you stand for. He's our defense. He's despised and rejected. Bless God, finally on the deeds, he's my deliverer. He delivered me from the wrath of God. He delivered me from hell. He delivered me from judgment. He delivered me from the grave. He delivered me from my flesh and the world. And I'll tell you, he's going to deliver me into his very presence someday. Amen. Then the Bible on E says he's my ensign. Well, an ensign is something you put up on a pole. And I'll tell you what, the cross is my ensign, the cross of Christ. The Bible said he's equal with God. That's in the book of Philippians. He is equal with God. Amen. He's God Almighty. Then the Bible said he's the express image of the Father. And the Bible said he's the everlasting God. And the Bible said he's the elect. And the Bible said he's the end of the law. And the Bible said he's our example. And the Bible said he's our eternal life. And the Bible said he's our exceeding great reward. Then we get to the F's. And I want to tell you something. The Bible said he's my friend. I got a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs, sorrow, share, and so forth. The Bible said he's the first begotten of the dead. Come up alive forevermore. He's the first fruits. He's the faithful witness. He's the forerunner. He's fairer than the children of men. He's the faithful creator. He's the first and the last. I like that awful well. He's the foundation. He's our fortress. He's our fountain of life. What else do we want? What do you think about him? What do you think about him? Gee, he's God. He's my guest. And he's our guest in this church this morning. He's the governor of the nations. He's my God. He's my glory. H, he's the highest. Ain't nobody higher than him. Amen. He's the head of the church. Amen. Not me. He is the head of the church. He is the holy one, the Bible said. He's the church's husband. <laughs> I just had a wonderful thought. Brett, if I spit on your wife, what would you do? It wouldn't be good. Can you all imagine what Jesus is going to do to the world that spits on his bride? That's, right. That's what the world's doing right now at the church. They're spitting on Christ, but they're going to knock them Lulu. Amen. He's going to put them into another world. Amen. Well, where in the world was I at? Does anybody know where I was at? He's the highest. He's the head of the church. He's the holy one. He's the husband. He's the heir of all things, and we're joint heirs with him. He's our great high priest, and he is our hope. He is our hiding place. He's our habitation. He's our house of defense. He's our help. He's the horn of salvation. He's the head of the cornerstone. And I, he's the image of the invisible. He is God. He is immortal. He's incorruptible. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the I am that I am. He's the interpreter. He's the intercessor. J, he's Jehovah. I've got to say this. Now, you are listening to me, and I want all you guys online hear me. He's not Yeshua. He's Jesus. You Yahweh bunch, you don't like the King James Bible, that's your problem. So you want to change the name of Jesus. His name is Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. It's Jesus. Ah, oh, you know you got some neighbors and buddies using Yahweh. They try to sound intellectual to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That needs to be said. It needs to be said. It's Jesus. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, he 
He's Jehovah. He's the just one. He's the judge of the quick and dead. And he's Jesus. K, he's the keeper of my soul. Woo! He's the king of righteousness and the king of Salem and the king of peace and the king of the Jews and the king of Israel and the king of saints and the king of glory and the king of kings. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to quit on L. And I'm going to give you a few L's and we're going to go home. Well, it's just 11.45. Maybe I'll give you several L's. <laughs> no, put up Isaiah 55. Guys, are you ready? We're going to run fast now. That was the introduction. <laughs> I said, you know what? I ain't going to get all this preaching. I know it. So I'll just come back next week and finish it. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to preach to you a little bit here. Put up, uh, did you get up Isaiah 55? <laughs> What's wrong, guys? Huh? I can't hear you. Oh, it's up there. We're one-legged this morning. <laughs> All right. I want you to look what Isaiah said, called him. Behold, I've given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Yeah. Jesus is my leader. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Joe Biden not my leader? Amen. Governor of Missouri is not my leader? Amen. Jesus is my leader. Amen. And he's my commander. And I want to tell you this morning this, that in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, God led them with a cloud. God leads his people, the Bible says. In Exodus, he not only led them out, but he led them in. And God will always lead his people out of Egypt. I want to ask you a question this morning. Is he your leader? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Is he your leader? Yes. Yeah. I don't... Be kidding me around. I'm not joking with you. I want to know, is he your leader? Yes. If he's your leader, are you following him? Yes. If he's your commander, like it says there, are you obeying his commands? Oh, I'm going to make some of you mad right now. I'm, just, I'm so sick of this transgender garbage. Dear brother up here had to put up with a bunch of garbage this week. But I'm going to tell you all something. Transgenderism didn't start in the last two or three, five, ten, fifteen years. It started and all you women started wearing men's clothes, and that's when it started. Now say amen. amen. That's exactly right. I never did see about, oh, I had a few of them weirdos somewhere, maybe back 50, 60 years ago, some man wearing women's dress. But you didn't see no men, you didn't see men running around dresses in America. That's right. No, that's right. Is he your leader? Is he your leader in your marriage? Is he your commander? You ought to ask yourself some questions this morning. Is that just, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Is he your leader? I'm going to do what the Bible says. I'm going to do what the Bible says. There are so many issues out here. Bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You don't let the he, he, all, he, over and over through the Bible. You do not let the heathen raise your children. Amen. Is he your leader? We just talk. It makes, it, it, I'm, I'm just so fed up with churches in America. They come in there and the, and the drums get to go and the guitar gets to go and they get up there and them women in their tight britches showing their rear end and their, their crotch and everything else and they're leading worship service. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bunch of bull. Amen. Out of the bowels of hell. Amen. You can tell them I said so and I don't care whether they're singing rock and roll or country and western. Amen. Oh, we're having a good time this morning. Amen. His name is Leader. Yes. Yeah. But is it talk or is it reality? Honor thy father and thy mother. Leader, talk or reality, or, or, or just talk. Love the brethren. Reality or talk. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Talk or reality. Wives, submit yourselves and you'll have a talk or reality. They that know his name. Numbers 21, they said Joshua would lead them in, lead them out, and he'd bring them in. 
Jesus not only, he'll always, I'm going to tell you something right now. When you get saved, the whole process starts being that he will lead you out of this world system. He will lead you away from all this world. I want to tell you something. I don't know. I guess I got something weird. And I got saved. He led me out of rock and roll, led me out of country western, led me out of tight, wearing tight britches, led me out of long hair. He just been leading me. Yes. Don't mean I'm righteous. Don't mean I'm holy. He's just leading. Amen. Yes. You say, how'd, you, how'd he lead you out of long hair? Well, I got to read. I, I read his instruction manual. Yes. I read the orders from headquarters. Said, said no, you're not that uh, uh, long hair. Shame to a man. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. You say, where'd you get this modesty issue at? Got it out of the instruction book. That's right, man. Where'd you get this deal about dressing men and, and, women, and women dressing distinctly? Man should not wear that which appertains to a woman. Read it in the instruction book from my leader. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! We are having a good time in Dodge City tonight, amen. amen. I want to tell you something. If you want some freedom, if you want some liberty, get behind the leader and quit fighting him and quit justifying and arguing and fussing with him. And even when you sin, say, God, I sinned. I didn't do right. Amen. But my heart wants to do right. Amen. Man, don't work, you don't eat. Amen. Instruction book from my leader. Amen. A tail bearer. Yeah. The wounds go down. Where no wood is, the fire goes out. Shut your mouth. Amen. Shut your mouth. Bitterness springing up, trouble, thereby many be defiled, trouble you. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. We can't do it all. He, we'll sing it, leadeth me. I too high. He leadeth me. Oh, blessed Lord. Oh, words with liberty come. Christ lead you in this book, lead you, let me tell you who will lead you. The devil will lead you. You're going to be led by somebody. You're going to be led by somebody. Who led you to drink that liquor? Who led you to commit that fornication? Who led you to leave your wife? Who led you to commit adultery? Who led you to lie? Who led you to cheat? Who led you to steal? Who led you to smoke that dope? Who led you to hate your family? Who's leading you? I'm just going to tell you right now, I ain't going to monkey with you. We're getting ready to have camp meeting. I tell you what, I would guarantee you this, that in the heavenly and the spiritual realm, there's more warfare going on than you and I can imagine. And I'm telling you, I'm in the middle of it. I can tell it. That the devil is fighting this church like nobody's business. I mean, tell you what, if he could, he'd blow a bomb off this church like an atomic bomb. Because he knows. And we'll tell you what's going to be the secret. Are you letting him lead you? All the way. I want to ask you this this morning. We're going to sing just a little bit. One chorus, we're going to go home. I want to ask you to answer an honest question. Is... He leading me, or is it talk? And let me tell you how you know that's the spirit of obedience in your heart. Yeah. Is he leading you? Who's really leading you? Who's, who's leading your children? 
all this stuff going across America, parents being all concerned. What do you expect from the world? What do you expect from the world? I'm going to ask you to come this morning. So, Lord, I want you to lead me, and I mean it. All the way my Savior leads me. Whatever I you ask me, son. Lord, would you lead me? His tender mercy I, I do my best to try to love you. I think I love you. I don't preach anything that hurts you. But I tell you, I've got to preach the Bible. I've got to preach the truth. I've got to preach on the issues of the day. And now whether you believe it or not, I do have your best in mind. And I want God to lead myself. And I want God to lead you. And I want God to lead this church. And I'm asking this morning... Would you get the grace of God and say, Lord, think about this. If you're lost here today, it's the goodness of God, listen to it, that leadeth thee to repentance. But did you know, dear Christian, it's the grace of God that leads you to repentance. God loves you and he doesn't want you destroyed by your own disobedience. Is he your leader? Or is it talk? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that you are our leader. Jesus Christ is our leader. And I pray, God, today that you'll forgive me for the times, Lord, when I've rebelled against his leadership. And, Lord, I pray today that you'll give me a heart that loves to be led by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I know, Lord, that David said he leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I know, God, that even though you may lead us through trials, troubles, tribulations, sorrows, pain, God, where you lead, it'll be all right because you'll be there. And I pray, God, today that you'll make it in this church to where we let the Lord lead this church. I pray, God, every family in this church will be the Lord leads this family. I pray every individual would say an honest truth. I want the Lord to lead me. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to give you one more chance to come do business with God. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I in some measure we have glorified you by honoring your word by submitting ourselves to it and by letting your spirit search our hearts and by rejoicing in the fact that Christ is our all in all the author and finisher of our faith and Lord I thank you that he's our leader and Lord that you will lead us to the promised land you're going to lead us all the way Lord, I thank you that times when we couldn't follow heartily, Lord, you picked us up and carried us. And Lord, I pray for these folks today. I pray for their marriages, that their marriages will stay together. I pray, God, there'd be humility in our midst. 
That we'd not be high minded or think we're something when we're nothing. That we would esteem each other greater than ourselves. And that we would extend the mercy to others that we'd like people to extend to us. And Lord, I pray especially for those that are hurting in this auditorium today and listening online. These things happen. They're going through some things. Lord, they're hurting. They're hurting deep. And I pray, God, today that you'll give them the balm of Gilead. God, that you'll comfort them and be their consolation, their counselor today. Be their city of refuge and their covert in the time of storm. And God, may they, like old John the Apostle, lay their head and rest on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the Bible. And I thank you for your grace. Lord, I pray that somebody listening today that's not saved, that they'll call upon the Lord while they can. And they'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ's death and burial and resurrection and shed blood for their sin and receive him and accept him as their Savior. God help them to know they're going to get away more than they planned on. And I'm glad for that. Pray for Van tonight, Lord, as he speaks to our congregation. And I pray, God, that our singing will be lively and enthusiastically and heartily done with our hearts. Pray that our preaching and praying will be with our hearts. That our worship and attendance would be with our hearts. And it wouldn't be no put on, no junk. And God, that we'd be more enthused about serving you than anything in this world. And it's in that wonderful, lovely name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight. I love you in the Lord.